I'm Luke Butler. I'm uh, the Director of Innovation at Cadium. Um, at my job, I do a lot of work with spatial data. I mean, I've been doing it for, for ages. I'm a, a civil engineer. Back in, I think it was 2015, I was creating maps. I was doing all types of different, you know, spatial data. And I was sort of one of those things. I always like to try to find different open data sources and, and create interesting maps. And at one point I saw on Twitter, people were sharing all these uh, maps of building heights and, and sort of, you know, it seemed interesting. I sort of dug into the city I was living on had an open data portal and I found they had very similar amounts of information. I ended up creating this map that you see here. So this was created in Leaflet and all these tiles were like manually generated. So I think this was a, a multi-day effort to get here, right? So it's a nice little map just showing you all the buildings in uh, the city of Melbourne in Australia. And, and what seems relatively simple now was a, a little bit of effort, right? You know, it involved um, using um, a program called Tile Mill, which you sort of no longer exist, an old school um, app developed by Mapbox before they did um, an online tool. So you would do all the editing on your own desktop computer and, and actually end up generating um, an MB tile file. Uh, and then there was also this other format called UTF file. It, these, you know, it's all a blast from the past. I just actually remember actually doing all this. At that point, you also had to even host it yourself. So I remember actually loading this all up into Amazon AWS and and, and saving all the tiles. And it was a whole a whole thing, but yeah, it was a, it was a fun map to make. But you know, now with tools like Felt, it's um, so much more easier to develop these maps. And I thought, you know, it'd be a nice test once I was playing with Felt and thought, you know, what can I do? And thought, oh, I remembered I had developed this new map so many years ago. I'm like, I bet I could do it again uh, quite easily. Um, so yeah, I ended up redesigning this map and it, you know, what did take me maybe a couple of days before, you, I could do it soon in a couple of, uh, a, few, a few minimal amount of clicks, right? So I'll walk you through the process now, right? First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the open data portal for uh, the city of Melbourne. So a lot of these cities will have these open data portals. I know Felt shares a whole range of um, potential like sources of open data. You can search for specific things like so building heights. In this case, I know this exists, but they also have it in nice categories. Uh, you can see here they're, they're sharing you know, the building heights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a range of data that we're going to get into our map. So one of them is the building footprints. Um, another one uh, is also the property boundaries. You'll see why this is sort of giving a little bit more outline and styling of the actual map. And then also the municipality uh, boundary as well. So we're going to layer three different layers on top of each other and uh, create that same map we did um, in Mapbox. It's quite easy to get stuff in. So I'm going to go to the export here, uh, pick the GeoJSON. I'm just going to copy the URL and then I'm going to bring that across to here, upload from URL. Add the layer. Uh, next again, I'm going to then add the property boundaries while that's uploading. Upload from URL. And we'll do the property boundaries. That's going to start loading in as well. And lastly, the one that we're going to put on top of it is uh, the building footprints. So again, getting the last data set, copying that link in. Now we just upload this one. That's going to slowly start loading, right? So we can see it's uploading and processing the data. I'm gonna change the background. So at the moment you can see we've got the a normal uh, type of um, map that used to. So to change that, uh, we can go here in the list, select background. In this case, we'll just add a plain color. It's a sort of a light gray. I think if you remember, we looked at the municipality was uh, I think a, a, a dark background. So this was actually black, This the actual outline of the city of Melbourne. So once again, we can just click on here. We're gonna change the fill to black. Uh, and finally, the uh, property boundaries uh, were a lighter gray. And this, once again, this gives a little bit of highlight. So just click in the boundary. I want to change the color to a uh, light gray, sort of darkish gray, one, two, three. You can sort of see now there's like that little bit of an outline between. So we've got the outline of the municipality, the black for the actual municipality inside it. Uh, and then there's this light gray sort of tinge. So it just gives a bit of a shadow between where the, the roads are. And now we want to actually style these buildings. So we click here, we can see it's using the simple styling, but we want to switch this to, you know, style by the, the height. So the higher the buildings, we want to highlight those. Uh, so we can switch this from a uh, simple to color ranges and we need to color it by, you can see the properties that are in here. And we've got a whole range, but the one that we're actually interested in is structural, structure max elevation. So we're gonna do a range of colors based off 
the elevations. And you can already see now all the, uh, this is the uh, central business districts with all the skyscrapers. You can obviously see slightly higher. Um, you can change the colors depending what you like. And you have a whole range of ways that you can you know, change these stylings, right? I was a little picky. I you know, wanted to choose how I set this up, but I'm gonna switch this to match the same scale that I used in the previous map. Um, so I will just run that through quickly. Now, if I can remember what they are. Okay, yeah, so the numbers, I'm just gonna edit these to be more what I was looking for. Okay, so now that's actually matching the same stars of the map before. It's just a slightly different color scale. To change the color scales, we've got to do a little bit um, of work and actually edit the source uh, to get um, a, a separate color scale in here. Uh, so to do that, you have to click the three double dots. And this is a little, a little advanced. We're going into the edit source now. Uh, and you can see how the layer is described in, in a JSON format here. We can see these are the, the individual colors, right? So if we wanted to change these, we could do them manually put something here and it would change that color. Um, I've actually written down the colors that I had used before. So I'm gonna swap these in. You can see now it's swapped in, that's nice, it's the same. Uh, we can close this source. And now we have that exact same map uh, that took me uh, a couple days before. Uh, now filled in and looking exactly the same with a very minimal amount of work. I didn't even have to download any data, I could just load it straight in. So actually one little change I did notice, um, the borders are a little thick here. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was to blend those borders in. So to do that, I'm going to change the stroke here from uh, 1 to uh, 0 0.3. And so that just highlights and lets those buildings sort of blend together a little bit better. Here we go. And now the map is exactly the same with uh, minimal amount of work.